This time on Flannel Farms, we're clearing three acres with a forestry mulcher. Oh yeah. I'm here with my buddy Mark, who has brought over his 72 millimeter forestry mulching monster. This thing will take out trees up to about eight inches around. What does that look like, you ask? Well, let's go look at some trees. So these are the woods where we've been keeping our pigs. And you can see they've kind of underbrushed it. But the problem is we've run hot wire all over through here and it made loading them, unloading them, catching them, moving them, rotating them incredibly difficult. So we currently have them locked up over here in pig jail. But all this area behind me, we're gonna clear out and you will see the master plan for this in the coming weeks as we start to lay out our grid system and our padlocks to make these pigs easier. The other reason we did it is we realized that we didn't have nearly enough room for all of our cows. So we sold all the cows, took down fences, and outside this pig area, the area where I'm walking now is going to eventually be turned into pasture. All this will be pasture. Now some of you I'm sure are going, Oh no, there's so many beautiful trees. How come you don't build a log cabin out of them? Why don't you turn them into fence posts? Well, to be perfectly honest, the amount of time it takes to cut the tree down, cut it into fence post size, strip all of the bark off of it so it doesn't rot, and use it for either fence posts or building is really not worth the time. Now, these aren't even that good for burning. Most of these trees are these little things you see. And the nice thing about the forestry mulcher that he has is it's gonna leave everything over eight inches, so we're gonna have beautiful silvo pasture back here. But enough rambling. Let's see this thing work. What a forestry mulcher essentially is, is a row of spinning teeth, much like a stump grinder. And this is what you end up with. Now some of this is gonna get chopped up again. It just fell on the other side of the wire fence. You don't wanna hit wire with it. But there was a stump there. Well, there was a whole tree there. No longer. And he is just munching his way right through. Now the forestry mulcher that he has attached to that machine operates off of hydraulic fluid that makes it spin. You need a certain number of gallons per minute GPMs to make that head spin fast enough to do what it needs to. And he told me that that head is right at the limit of what his machine is capable of. So what you'll see him do is turn it off the spinning head, get to where he needs to go, get the head spinning, and then run into the tree. And the tree will slow it down. In terms of brush and anything smaller than two inches, it just eats it. We're about an hour in, and actually it's taken longer than I thought, but it's so much cleaner than I thought. This thing is doing such an awesome job. So we'll just have to see. I know I said three acres earlier. It might be one acre, but anything that we get done today is gonna be a huge bonus. We're going to be able to expand that pasture back there this way, and we're going to be able to set up new pig pens. It's going to be good. Okay, good news, bad news. Good news. This thing works amazing. You can see all the shredding that it's done. The bad news is because we are at the peak abilities of this machine in terms of hydraulic flow, it's having some trouble with the bigger ones. So we have a new plan of attack. What he's doing is he's going through everywhere clearing out most of the brambles as you can see and then leaving some of the bigger ones so that we can get the most area cleared the quickest and what this actually allows me to do is come back with our tractor that you haven't met yet new tractor 1963 ford 2000 industrial which technically makes it a 2030 but that's a different story and now if i need to and i don't want this here i can come with a chainsaw cut this down and drag the pieces out because i actually have room to work so it's about lunchtime. time to go get some food let the machine take a break hydrate and get back at it We 
finished with the machine yesterday. We had it for Saturday and we had it for Sunday after church. And as you can see, there are still a lot of woods behind me. I'm gonna tell you something you need to look out for if you're getting one of these machines. I am gonna show you the areas that we did get done with it and some of the mistakes that we might have made. This is not a knock on my buddy Mark or his machine. They did really well, but I think I had unrealistic expectations, which isn't uncommon for me. We're clearing three acres with a forestry bolt. Let's go. So what went wrong? Why didn't we get all these woods you see cleared? Well, we talked a little earlier about the hydraulic flow that that cutter head needs. That cutter head is designed to operate between 18 gallons and I believe it was 25 gallons a minute. And his machine puts out 18, which is the bare minimum. So this is my little electric chainsaw. Technically, this thing will go through something like this. And will it? Well, yeah. Timber, maybe. But is that really what it's designed for? No, it's designed for stuff like that. It takes no time at all. So his machine was able to cut through these things, but it took a long time and it took a lot longer than we thought. So like we talked about in our last video with risk reward and things like that, pretty quickly we realized we weren't gonna get as far as we needed. So we changed tactics and what you see me walking down now is a path that he made through our woods in virgin territory for us. We've never had animals back this far. We've never had fencing up. And he made a path all the way around our wooded area. He cleared some of the wooded area. I'll show you that in a minute. And what we're gonna do currently is put some fencing up around all of these woods. And we're gonna turn the pigs loose and let them do what pigs do. Underbrush, root, things like that. And eventually we will do one of two things. We are either going to take our chainsaws and come in here and start knocking things down and folding them toward the middle so we have a nice burn pile away from all of our other woods. Or, and this is the option I'm actually leaning toward, we are going to rent a forestry mulcher. Now the forestry mulcher that we found is able to go through eight inch trees, similar to his. However, the GPMs of hydraulic fluid that flow through it, remember, that's what gives it its cutting power, its speed, its ability to maintain against resistance, is 34. His operates at 18 to 24. So we are talking a vast increase in power. Still makes a chainsaw that's designed for treetop work. It's a very small blade, maybe 10 inches, but it has a massive little motor on the back and it would zip through that tree that I just cut down in no time. So really what we asked of his machine in the time we asked it for was too much, but he did give us some beautiful trails that we can put our fencing up on and they lead right out to this. This is our pasture. And what we're trying to do is turn all this area that we just walked through into pasture. The downside about renting that forestry mulcher is it's about $4,000 for a week, which is a great price if you've ever priced out land clearing. You know what a bargain that is, but that's still $4,000. So send your super thanks below. Help us raise 4,000. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Although if you want to. Now what we want our pasture to look like is this. This is what we had hoped all of that would end up looking like. But this took probably three hours and you can see through there, that's where the pigs used to be when we first moved here. And that's where like our crop garden area is. We had really hoped that all of this area would kind of end up looking like this. And it might yet, just not this time. So our pigs are in a tiny little spot now because we got them out of all of the areas that we thought we were gonna clear. So I have to go now and put pig fences back up. But because I have these trails, it's going to save me a boatload of time and they'll have new fresh ground to churn up. So thanks for joining me today. If you end up getting a forestry mulcher or renting one or whatever, and it says it can do eight inch trees, remember that's the maximum. It's gonna go a lot quicker through things that are smaller. So if you have eight inch trees or a lot of trees, you might wanna up that and save yourself that time. My name is Brian, and this video is sponsored by His Garden Reef. And they make 
high quality external low voltage lighting. And when I say high quality, these things are made out of solid brass. They're really, really tough, durable, and beautiful. And we asked for this set, which casts light down onto your walkway, as you can see. And they're absolutely beautiful. If you're tired of the cheap ones from the big lock stores that, you know, go on sale for 99 cents and all that stuff, and the solar powered ones that don't seem to last, these come with everything that you need to install a low voltage system. Very easy. You plug it into an outlet, you run a couple wires into it, one to the common, one to the 12 volt, you bury your line, and you have this beautiful, beautiful lit walkway. Now they make all sorts. They make spotlights, they make pendant lights. I personally picked these because I think they're the most beautiful. Now, our sponsors help us stay on the air, as it were. They provide us with some pretty neat things, but they also help us pay the bills. So if you are looking for some sort of exterior garden lighting, path lighting, whatever, I highly recommend Garden Reap. Everything you need, one box, super easy, not hard to install. A couple things I want to show you. One, you don't have to dig a super huge trench. Somewhere between three and six inches, you don't need conduit. All that's fine. Another thing I want you to see, do you see that lettering? It doesn't matter that it says 105 CFT2 300 V, whatever. None of that matters. What matters is that you see that writing. This is the wire that goes to the actual light. The wire underneath it has the same lettering. It looks like this. Circuit cable FT 60C, whatever. Make sure when you strip your wires that this wire from your transformer matches the wire to your light itself. That will help you keep your power and your ground separate. This is your transformer box. And you plug in your wire, depending on how long it is, to either the 12V or the 15V. And the common one basically is your ground. So plug in the writing to your 12 or 15, depending on how much wire you're running. It won't hurt it either way. If you plug in the 12V volt, it will just be slightly less bright than the 15. That's it. And then there's a light switch up top. There's a timer disc in the middle that they don't give any instructions on, so I'm ignoring it. This entire installation took me maybe an hour and a half this afternoon, and that includes burying the line. We just ran right along the concrete and put it in. I'm really excited to have something out here. We live in the middle of nowhere, lighting is a problem for us. You guys know that I absolutely love lighting. We've probably done four or five different sponsors with lights, but this is the first one that I've chosen simply for aesthetic reasons. We've picked the spotlight ones because it had floodlights, we've done security lights, we've done high angle beam lights, but these I really chose just to help beautify the area for Mrs. Final. Garden Reap, you can see in the description below the link. Click on it. Tell them Flannel Farm sent you. My name is Brian. Thanks for watching. Keep growing as you grow. We'll see you next time. Bye. Looks real nice. <laughs> you heard it, folks. Right pretty. Right pretty.